Hello there, in this video I'm going to be going through the causes, events and consequences of the Cap Putsch. The Cap Putsch is an attempt by nationalists and conservatives to overthrow the Weimar Republic in the spring of 1920. But what causes it, what are the events of it and what happens because of it? If you've got any questions about anything that I say during this video, please put them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them or maybe someone else will be able to answer them for you first. So what are the causes of the Cap Putsch? So, in June of 1919, the Weimar Republic has to sign the Treaty of Versailles. The Treaty of Versailles is the document that ends the First World War. Now, one of the provisions of that, that treaty, that document, was that the German army was going to have to be massively scaled down in size. They could only have 100,000 men. Now, the German army had been 2 million men before the First World War, and it was a massive source of pride for nationalists and conservatives who believed very strongly in the power of the German military. Furthermore, the German army couldn't have any sort of unofficial soldiers on the side, which it kind of does at this point. They're the fly corps. These are kind of volunteer gangs of soldiers sort of roaming around. They're not allowed to have them. They must be disbanded and disarmed. All of this is meant to kick in at the end of March 1920. Now, in the middle of March 1920, the leader of the army around Berlin decides that he can't stand for this. He wants this to go. His name is Walter von Ludwitz and von Lutwitz decides that he's going to try to overthrow the Weimar Republic. What he does is he goes on the 10th of March to speak to the president of the Weimar Republic, a man called Friedrich Ebert, and a man who is the defense minister called Gustav Noska. He goes and he sees them and he says, right, I've got my army, I'm going to overthrow you, unless you immediately hold elections, and those elections will no doubt remove you from power and put conservatives in power. And von Lutwitz is kind of gambling that this new kind of conservative government would scrap the Treaty of Versailles. Now, basically, uh, Ebert and Noska look at Ludwitz and say, what on earth are you planning to do here, mate? No, we are not going anywhere. Bye-bye. And von Lutwitz storms out of the meeting absolutely furious. So what are the events of the Cat Putsch? Well, von Lutwitz storms out of the meeting and he immediately goes and speaks to leaders of these Freikorps units in and around Berlin. And he says to them, look, will you support me? I'm going to try and overthrow the government. And they are very happy to try to do that. Furthermore, von Ludwitz goes and speaks to some conservative parties in and around Berlin. And in particular, he speaks to the leader of one of them, who is known as Wolfgang Kapp. And von Kapp is the name that the putsch is given. He's the guy who gets the, the putsch named after him. Now, what he does is von Ludwitz orders his soldiers to attack Berlin and march on it and seize the city. And that's exactly what they do on the 12th of March. They move in. Now, the um, Social Democratic government of the Weimar Republic is kind of thinking, oh my God, what are we going to do? They ask soldiers that might be loyal to them, still within Berlin, look, will you stop the soldiers and the Freikorps coming to get us? And the soldiers around them who are meant to guard them say, no, we will not fire on German soldiers because we're German soldiers as well. So the, the Social Democrats start to panic. And what they decide they're going to do is call a general strike. And what this means is that they want everybody who can possibly strike to go on strike. Not just like one or two factories here or there, everything right across Germany. They make the decision but they have to flee because the soldiers are marching into Berlin and they leave the office they're meeting in just 10 minutes before the soldiers arrive to try to arrest them. So what are the consequences of the Cap Putsch? Well, the army do manage to seize control with the Freikorps of Berlin and several major cities across Germany, but a general strike does start. People come out and they start protesting on the streets against the new government, against this, this, um, this, this conservative nationalist takeover. Now, these people who go on strike cripple the government because these are vital workers. These are people who run the power stations. These are people who run the trains. These are people who run the telephones. In particular, the telephones are very important because it means that no messages can actually leave Berlin to go to any other part of the country. The only way that communication can take place at this point is by a messenger, by a runner. So essentially, a letter needs to be written, given to a runner, and the runner runs it to another building. If it needs to go to another part of the country, someone has to get into a, into a car or a motorcycle to drive it to the part of the country. And this means it becomes very difficult for the new government to actually govern. Furthermore, the Social Democrats are clever. They say that they will allow some elections to take place, uh, but only if Wolfgang Kapp and Walter von Ludwitz give up. Now, the Conservative parties who've kind of been brought into this, this putsch, 
are actually quite happy with that deal. It's a very clever play from the Social Democrats because it kind of splits the putschists. Some want to try to control and carry on, you know, with it, basically build a dictatorship. Others are quite happy for there to be elections and for them not to be kind of arrested at the end of all of this. So they abandon, the parties, the politicians, abandon Wolfgang Kapp and Walter von Lutwitz, realising that they're unable to govern the country or are losing support from their own supporters, from, from the putschists, the Wolfgang Kapp and Walter von Lutwitz decide to flee and they get away. They manage to cross the border outside of Germany by being helped by local policemen who are sympathetic to them. Crucially, the Weimar Republic and the Social Democrats are able to retake power. And that's because the German people have demonstrated that they're unwilling at this point to accept a right-wing government. The Freikorps begin to fade away because they are disbanded over the course of the next few months. They can't stop it from happening. So there we are, the causes, events and consequences of the Cap Putsch. If you've enjoyed this video, I'd politely ask you to share it so that other people can enjoy it too. And I will see you soon in the next video where I'm going to be discussing about more threats from the extreme left to the Weimar Republic. Toodle pick.